What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fandoms Anonymous. Riding around today, taking care of a few errands, letting the wife go in the store so I can just sit out and wait. That's what husbands do. We let them go in the store and we sit out and wait. But I'm here today to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 5. We finally get some backstory on what's been going on with Fitz. And it is spectacular how they just revolve it all around and connect it all together. So basically, we leave... Well, we start off basically where Fitz was left in the diner by himself after everybody else was abducted. Fitz was left behind because he was supposed to be. We'll get to that in a second. All right. Fitz left behind. All of a sudden, these military people pull up because you got to remember they're still on the run because the Daisy LMD shot uh, General Talbert. He shot him, you know, in the last beginning at the end of the season, the eight, the Daisy LMD shot him. Uh, he's still recovering, but you, they knew that they were after them, but they were captured first by Enoch, which was the guy that we saw at the very beginning of the season who took his clothes off. He's an actually an alien. So basically we, we, finish off and we start off with Fitz he's been captured by the military they have him in a holding cell they're asking him questions they keep him there for six months the Fitz they finally realize that he didn't do it based on a lie detector test and they say maybe we need him to help us rather than continuing to punish him so they give him all what he needs they give him books they give him a television so he can watch soccer he's coming up with all different ideas and theories on what happened and why um, you know they might and how they were captured but this whole time, he was sending out coded messages to Hunter. Now, we haven't seen Hunter since the episode where him and Bobby left the show. Uh, if you know Adrian Palicki, who plays um, Mockingbird or Bobby Morse, she is a character on the new Orville show. So probably we may or may not see her. Who knows? Who really knows what's going to go on, go on there? But uh, we get Hunter. He's there to rescue Fitz. Fitz knows exactly where Enoch is. He goes to Enoch's house. They confront Enoch and tell him, you're going to take us to where we need to go to get to where we need to save our friends. Come to find out, Enoch is basic, was basically sent to Earth 30,000 years ago. He's a long, one of those long-living people that can live. Because, of course, he's an alien. But he's taking on like a human form or a human skin. Um, he tells him that he's been following the, uh, the mandates and the followings of somebody named the seer. So he takes Fitz to go see the seer and lo and behold, it's little Robin. Now, if you remember Robin, there was a part in Agents of Seal between two and three where there was a guy that if he touched you, he could sense your death and, and show you your death, how you were going to die. This was his daughter. Of course, she has inhuman abilities. We don't know if she's going through teragenesis, but she may have just developed these abilities, abilities because they're so strong. So she draws her visions and Enoch maps out and follows the visions. All right. So we got this new protagonist, uh, General Ellen. I think that's her name or Alan. She sent out two of her people to go after them. Enoch gets, ends up helping them escape. Uh, of course, Lance broke Fitz out of jail so they can get through all of this. And he tells them, hey, I know a way where you can get to the future because they are in the year 2091. 2091, they're 70 something years in the future. So he tells them, look, you got to go get this capsule of mines. It's uh, on this military base, the same military base that Fitz broke out of. So they're able to get into the base and use ferrets to trip the alarm so that they can steal the ba the, um, the capsule that he came in on. And so they could also steal the Zephyr. Now, if you guys remember the Zephyr, that's what they used to live on, uh, on the shield. Now, you know, the big Zephyr that may use to fly to get them everywhere they need to go with the cloaking device, all that good stuff. So they're able to get all that material and they go to the lighthouse. Now, this is where I got construed with or conflicted with. This whole time since the season started, I thought they were saying life as an L-I-F-E house. But they were saying light as in turning on a lighthouse or the actual lighthouse that they went to. The lighthouse that they went to was the actual bunker that they are living in now in the future. The lighthouse. So if you guys remember, there was a postcard with Fitz name on it. It was dusty. It was old. It was kind of crinkly, but it had Lake Ontario on it and it had Fitz, Fitz his signature saying, I'm working on it. Basically, they're in the future of that lighthouse. 
Fitz is in the past, first finding out about the lighthouse. Fitz ends up going to a cryogenic sleep for over 70 years with Enoch watching him, making sure that nothing happens to him so that when he wakes up, he can help save the team. How epic is that? And that postcard that he left on that table was in the same exact spot that Gemma and the team found it all those years later in the future. What an amazing twist. What an amazing tie-in to this season that we're getting so far. I'm definitely excited to see what happens next because more than likely we're going to continue off to where we left Fitz revealing himself to Casillas and all the other people in front of Daisy and everyone else alike. So let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below, whether you watch this on YouTube or Facebook. We'll see you guys later and we'll see you guys in another video.